Hi, I'm Aditi. I'm 13 years old, and I'm here to talk about how you can code better with no code. Starting to build a website from scratch has to be one of the most frustrating situations, even when you have years of experience. As someone that's been coding for the past three years, I tend to face the same problems over and over again. The HTML structure of building a website is fairly easy. I think most people can agree with that. While building this aspect of it, I'm happy with the way things are going, but more importantly, I'm excited for the future. With CSS, things get a little bit more difficult, and I start to question whether or not web development is the right path for me. But the moment that I have to use any kind of JavaScript, it's like my brain goes blank. Needless to say, coding a website is difficult and time consuming. But before I get into anything else, I'm sure at least one of you is wondering how I got here. So let's explore my journey. It's 2015 and you ask six-year-old Aditi, what do you wanna be when you grow up? She answers with no hesitation, a doctor. Fast forward a couple years and now it's 2018 and you see nine-year-old Aditi walking through Costco with the biology textbook. You ask her, so you're gonna be a doctor when you grow up? Yes, she replies, smiling, a cardiologist. From ages six to 10, I knew that I wanted to be a doctor. Every holiday, I got tons of doctor kits filled with stethoscopes, thermometers, and band-aids. I've gotten medical books, microscopes, you name it. My parents, they support me. They encourage me to keep studying. And that's what I did in the summer leading up to fourth grade. But every day that I had to pick up the books and take notes on cell functions, I grew more and more wary. This is what I have to do for the rest of my life? Ironic, huh? A wannabe cardiologist that just doesn't have her heart in medicine. So instead of studying about cells and mitochondria, I, in typical nine-year-old fashion, played with Legos. Every day of summer break, I worked towards building the Eiffel Tower, or maybe it was Hagrid's hut. My family wanted to stimulate my brain a little. So for my 10th birthday, I was promised something that would change the course of my life for good. That was the Lego Mindstorms. The Lego Mindstorms was kind of like an introductory coding experience. It allowed me to incorporate Legos into coding. I was able to build robots and program them to move, avoid obstacles, and more. With Mindstorms, I was able to learn some basic coding terminology, like algorithms, if-else conditions, loops, and variables. I was starting to enjoy this, combining something I already loved, Legos, with something I had a newfound interest for, coding. It was a great start to my journey, but I couldn't stop there. I had to expand my horizons. Introducing Python, supposedly the easiest programming language for beginners to start with. Despite everyone saying how effortless it would be to learn Python, that definitely wasn't the case with me. So I branched out into SQL to learn about queries, but even that couldn't hold my interest for too long. Then, for some reason, I tried C++, thinking maybe that would be easier. Boy, was I wrong. Having to specify int main in front of every program was definitely not my thing. At this point, I'd covered so many categories, but the only part of programming that was left was web development. I thought, hey, what have I got to lose? and I got started with HTML and CSS. At first, I was surprised by how easy it all felt. With HTML, there wasn't a lot of terminology to understand. I learned about some basic tags and I was good to go. Being able to see my changes in real time helped tremendously. Now, the extent of what I could create with my limited knowledge didn't look very good. So I sought out to create something that was a bit more appealing to the eye. For that, I had to take a deeper dive into CSS, which meant learning about Flexbox, CSS grids, and of course, the dreaded position absolute. But I mean, I wasn't totally discouraged. I'd already gotten so far, I was learning a couple more concepts. Then came my first fully responsive website, built over the course of four months. The sense of accomplishment I felt after finishing the website was definitely worth all the tears that came with. I kept building projects and learning more about web design until the pandemic hit. 
During quarantine, I watched every Marvel movie in chronological order, and it's safe to say that I was obsessed. I incorporated my love of Marvel into my next project by attempting to build the Marvel website. Now, this was the first website I had tried to rebuild that had tons of interactions, from the progress bar and the slider to the hover animations and the cards. I was overwhelmed with the amount of interactions I had to create. Sure, I could get the basic structure and styling done, but the JavaScript was practically impossible. Getting one simple interaction meant days, even weeks of work. Eventually, when you keep waking up to do something you love, but end up being disappointed, you just don't have the motivation to do it anymore. Everything felt hopeless. Then, by some stroke of luck, I found Webflow. Now, I'm usually the kind of person to skip ads, but when it starts with the words, if life for like web design, I have to watch it. Everything that I had to deal with when it came to web development was so accurately depicted in this one minute long clip, and I couldn't believe that there were other people out there who felt the exact same way that I did. So I obviously had to give this tool a try, and I'm so glad I did. I finished my first website within a week, but with page load interactions and Lottie animations, things I could have never dreamed of creating with code. That inspired me to start my own YouTube channel to provide the guidance to others that I wish I had when I was starting out. Now, most people using website builders like Webflow are designers, hoping to showcase their creativity without having to be held back explaining their visions to developers. There are also business owners who want to create a website but just don't have the resources to hire full-blown developers. But how does no-code help developers like myself? Isn't no-code basically a replacement for us? No, neither of those statements are true. No code offered a new perspective on the same issues I face as a developer. It isn't just a magical piece of technology that fixes all your problems, but it allows you to approach those problems in a different way. For example, creating a responsive nav bar interaction in Webflow is fairly easy. I just have to set up the trigger and pick which elements I wanna animate. But creating that same interaction in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript requires a little bit more effort. However, if I already know which styles I need to modify because of Webflow, it saves me tons of time. I can instead focus on the more important, more difficult part, which is of course, creating the trigger in JavaScript. It pushes me to become a better developer. I'm able to learn things from Webflow all the time, mainly because it allows me to spend the time on being a developer that requires me to come up with creative solutions, not the one that's stuck doing the same redundant tasks for each project. No code allows developers to push out websites much faster than they would have been able to do with code, especially now with Webflow component libraries like Reloom that offer reusable wireframes for certain sections of websites to further speed up development. For example, I attempted to build out the Gumroad website in Webflow as well as HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. While it's a known fact that Webflow can help you build websites faster, one area where it really shines is in the interactions. Building a parallax animation requires about 40 seconds of work in Webflow. I just have to set up a trigger to be set off when someone scrolls and choose which elements I wanna animate. Doing the same thing with JavaScript is way more time consuming and difficult. There's all these different variables, event listeners, and copy pasted code from the internet. It can get out of hand pretty quickly. I also think that a no-code tool like Webflow that offers a visual way to edit the exact same properties in CSS can help wannabe developers learn more about these concepts before they go ahead and take the dive into actually coding them out. It's easier if they just learn what each property does and how they're able to use them. Personally, I had the opposite introduction. I was already aware of the basics of web development with code, so Webflow came naturally. But maybe that shows that it can work in the other direction as well. People can take their knowledge from Webflow and use that to become better developers. With more and more people utilizing no code, low code, there's the fear that the need for developers will diminish. And that is true to some extent, but developers that were stuck doing repetitive things for clients can now use that time to create innovative designs. And the clients that wanted that kind of website can now do it without hiring a developer. It's a win-win solution for everyone. Okay, well, that's it for me, folks. Thank you.